right, this is my bike here. It's a 2016 Specialized Fuse. Uh, it's got mid-fat tires, 27.5 uh, by 3.0 tires. It's got 10 speeds and a um, hydraulic brakes and a dropper post. I'm really happy with the bike. Yeah, the only disappointment on this whole bike, this is a Fuse Comp, is this fork right here. These are Suntour Radons. From the factory, they don't, they don't use an oil bath at all. And they, uh, they basically get stiction a lot. So today we're gonna see if we can correct that problem. And we'll do that right over here on the workbench. And on this box, we can see it says fork box. So, <clears throat> it's just filled to the brim with forks. Let's open it up and see what we got. Another box. Let's open this up. It's box inception. Okay, now let's crack this open. A pair of Rock Shocks Pikes. Pike Ultimates. Look at that. Gorgeous. Beautiful box. I'm seeing it with you guys for the first time. Check it out. Oh cool, they give you a fender. I don't know why that's a thing now. It seems like everybody's putting little fenders on their bikes. Uh, that seems to be a recent development. But let's see what else is in here. So we get a fender that zip ties to the front fork. May not be installing that at all. Looks like we get some zip ties for the fender and a couple of volume spacers so that we can increase the progression rate of the fork. And uh, some stickers. So you give us a star nut for a steer tube. You guys ready? Holy shit. Oh man. Let me slip this off slow. Oh. There they are, guys. Pikes. Got them in black. That's all that was available at the time. She is gorgeous. So up here you got... Your low speed, I mean your high speed dampening on the outer dial here. That's gonna be for your little hits. I mean, yeah, for your big sudden hits and stuff. Then you got your low speed, which is gonna be, if you wanna dampen out your um, your pedal, like if you're pedaling and the shock keeps squishing at you, you can lock it out by going this way here. Um, a lot of adjustment. Anyhow, you can lock it out by going that way and that'll stop the shock from uh, wallowing as you climb or whatnot. Uh, I mostly leave them open. I don't have too many issues with that, but that's that's there for you. Um, that's your low speed. Your high speed is for your big hits. You know, um, you're just hitting you're just hitting a rock garden, and you don't want your fork to pack up too much. Then you can um, you can tighten that up. So, but I'm going to start with both of them wide open to start with. Over here, you got your air cap. And I've got to order a cassette tool because I can't make any adjustments to this fork because to remove the air cap, you have to have a cassette tool. You see here, it's a cassette tool removal. One nice thing about um, Rock Shocks is they have these nice sag gradients right on the fork, ready to go. And you got your little band that you slide down here, your little O-ring that you slide down help you set sag. I'll go over that when I install it on the bike, set sag and everything, we go over that. Now here's your rebound adjustment. So there's fast, we'll start with the fastest setting to start with. Everything's nice, look at the cap is attached with the set screw. All right, 
that's it. And here's your Maxil, which I'm happy to have. Um, I don't need a quick release or anything. I've always got my tool with me. I like the idea of just getting rid of the weight and keeping it simple. So anyways, that's the fork, guys. All right, you guys. We're going to change our fork here. We're going to throw on a new RockShox Pike Ultimate. Pretty sweet. Uh, this is a 120 millimeter radon here, uh, Suntour radon. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, take that thing off. And um, we're going to put a 130 millimeter RockShox Pike. So one of the measurements that's important is um, your height of your fork. So it's going to be from the top of the crown to the center line, the vertical distance here. And um, because these radons are a little bit chunky, I'm able to get 130 millimeter pipe. Should be about the same length as this 120 millimeter uh, sun tour. So our first step here is we're going to remove our wheel to make our life easier. This new mechanic stand really just makes this easier. Oh, it was way awful. I was working on my bike with the, with the bike upside down and stuff all the time. Suntour uses these really cool quick release axles. It's about the coolest thing on the bike or on the uh, fork. So, take our wheel and we'll set it aside. We don't have a wheel in there, so we don't want to crank down on that too much and pull the sanctions together. Next thing we need to do is remove our brake caliper. While your caliper is off, you don't uh, want to squeeze the brakes, or while your wheel is out, actually. Anytime the disc is not in the caliper, you don't want to squeeze your brakes. You'll overextend the pistons and can cause yourself all kinds of problems. So what I'm doing right here is just cleaning up a little bit before I go taking things apart. All right, for today's teardown, as much as I can, I'm gonna to try to use this tool. This is what I carry on the trails. And I wanna show you that it doesn't take a whole mess of tools. It takes some, but it doesn't take a whole mess of tools. Now this is a Crank Brothers multi-tool. Let's see here. Let's try a five millimeter on these on these guys here. See, these had some Loctite on it, so we'll probably put some blue Loctite back on there just so they don't back off while you're riding. Here's a lid to a jar of nuts. I just pulled out of trash. So um, I'm gonna put all my bolts in that. They're aluminum bolts on bikes a lot of times. Maybe they're steel. But uh, so anyways, just chuck them in there so that you don't lose them. All right, so we've got the brake caliper removed. Now we need to remove this little line holder here. Right there. Now that looks like maybe a three millimeter. Now all your bolts on your bike are going to be in millimeter. So we'll go ahead and release our brake line here. And we'll just let the brake dangle over there. So the next thing we want to do is there's two pinch bolts. There's one there. And look, right next to the bolt, they give you a torque reading specialized does that. So they give you a torque reading right there, so we'll know how tight to make those bolts. And then we have this top cap bolt, which is uh, preloads your headset bearings. First we want to do is we want to loosen these two pinch bolts, and then we'll loosen this guy, and we'll be sure to catch the fork as it comes out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take my rag and do a quick wipe down. I don't want to get... I want to avoid dirt getting into any kind of bearings. We don't have to, re we don't have to take these bolts out, we just want them to be loose. Next thing I'm going to do is, before I take anything else apart, I'm going to take a picture. I want to know what was there before. What I may do with the new fork is leave an extra 10 millimeter 
and just have a spacer up here with a little top cap so that I have the option of raising the stem a little bit should I want to. Looks like this one here is a four millimeter up top. This fork should start to drop out as I loosen this. Now the problem is, is that your steering tube will also, your uh, stem, your handlebars will also fall off. So we're going to try to plan for all that. Taking out our preload washer and screw here. So, to cut that out, right into our jar, our little nut jar. Let's pull our stem off, nice and easy. Don't have a place to put these. Didn't really think that through. Now let's pull our headset spacers off. Put those over there. Let's pull this top cap off here. It's got some grease in it. It's pretty clean in there. And let's see if we can drop our fork out the bottom. Okay, it looks like a race is coming out of the top here. Oh, there goes our bottom bearing. Good. It came with the fork. Don't have to worry about falling out on the ground as we pull out our fork. Okay, guys, there's our fork is out. Let's uh, just take out our bottom headset bearing. Let's put that in our little jar here. I want to keep that stuff clean. Okay, next thing we gotta do is we gotta transfer this race down here. I don't know if you guys can see this very well, but there's a race. And I'm lucky enough, in this case, to have a split race. Anyways, it's gonna make removal and installation on the new fork a lot easier. Let's go over here. We've got our new workbench. Now they make a special tool for pulling these races off, but it's expensive. You'll see there's a small divot in the crown right here. And there's one on the back side. See that? I don't know if you can see the divot. It's in the black. But trust me, it's there. It's a place where you can slide your screwdriver in. Here's a dull one. I'm using this old worn out one here. I don't know what brand or anything. And uh, we're going to slip it in this little gap. Pull this, this race out. If you're going to make any mistakes, do it on your old fork, not your new fork. All right, you guys, well, that's all we need off of this fork. The uh, star nut can stay in there. Uh, Rock Shocks was nice enough to give us a new one. So let's prep the new fork. All right, here's our old fork. Here's all your measurements right here. 2.025 kilograms. It's with the extra long steer tube, but no uh, star nut. So maybe it's about even. So we got 1.9 kilograms on the RockShock Pikes 130 millimeter. That's 4.19 pounds, 67 ounces. The part is cutting the steer tube down. Now I want to add 10 millimeters to the top here. So here's a 10 millimeter spacer. I do not have a metric tape measure. So we're going to just do it this way. The current tube is 7 and 7 sixteenths. We add our spacer, and now we're gonna go seven, and let's see here, 13 sixteenths. Okay, let's grab the other fork and mark it. Seven and 13 sixteenths. I know the tape measures at an angle, but it was when I measured it too. Use a pipe cutter. I've seen people do it on YouTube. It looks like it should be fine. Let's go ahead and do it. Get a decent pipe cutter if you're gonna do this. Uh, this one's made in USA. If, you, if they're not decent, instead of cutting, what they'll do is they'll spiral down the tube. You don't wanna spiral down the tube. It's not a good situation. All right, here we go, you guys. I'm gonna put this on here. I'm gonna line up our cutting wheel. 
they're marked here. All right, now we're gonna go around once. Make sure that we're not spiraling. It looks like we were. God damn it. Try again here. Damn pipe cutter spiraling down the tube. It's the whole thing I was hoping to avoid. Should have bought a rigid, guys. Should have paid my, more money for the goddamn rigid. Okay, see this, guys? It's fucking spiraling down the damn tube. And uh, I'm not causing that. So I don't know what the hell. So I'm going to try my best to get through this. I may be cutting this with a damned uh, sawzall. What I'm going to have to do is, instead of continuing the same motion, I'm going to have to go back and forth so that it doesn't walk further and further down the damn tube. We're gonna have some work to do with a file after this, I'll tell you what. So each time, I'm just going around once, I'm going back because of the spiraling issue. And I'm tightening the uh, knob a little bit each time. We're making a cut. It looks like we've gotten rid of our spiraling problem here. So that noise must mean something's happening. Okay, easy peasy guys, see that was no problem at all. All right, now, you see it didn't make a very straight cut, so now I gotta deal with that. May not have the 10 mil I originally wanted, so what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna take a file to this. The bottom is longer than the top, so we're gonna take a file and we're gonna clean that up. Take off any sharp edges. Now what we can do to check to see if it squares, I'll slide a headset. I'm gonna slide a headset space around there. See how square we are. You see the bottom sticks out just a little bit more, but that's probably not enough to make a difference. So I'll give it a few more licks. right here from where the wheel forced itself through and the material went up so what I'm gonna do too is I'll take this and I'll gently just wipe that edge off I'm holding at an angle to the steer tube So put an ever so slight bevel on it. Should aid us in assembly. Check and see how deep our uh, star nut was on our old one. Maybe about 12, 12 millimeters down. 
There's our star nut. Try giving it a whack in there. Got my special tool, just a nut driver, and a hammer. hammering my fork out of the stand. So let's, let's crank that down a little bit more. And just give it some more. It's going in there pretty square. This thing fits on the rivet nut in there. Rib nut, pretty good. And the old one was about 12 millimeters down. Let's see where we're at. About eight, eight, almost nine millimeters. I'm trying to keep it square by focusing the pressure on the high side, wherever it is. That looks plenty down there. I don't want to go any farther than that for now. There, there's 12.3 millimeters, perfect. Make sure our screw reaches out pretty easily, it does. So, there's our rib nut, our star nut installed down inside the fork. Let's now need to focus on installing our uh, race, our bottom race, our crown race, it's called. Okay, got it. We're going to clean it up first. Use these paper towels. And we'll put it on here. It's easy for me because I've got a split, but let's say you didn't. I'm going to pull it back off for a second. Let's say you didn't have a split crown race. You need a tool. Alright, what you do is you get one and a half inch PVC pipe. And they sell two foot sections at Lowe's and Home Depot. Uh, they were out of uh, the two foot, so I've got a, looks like a five footer here. So, what we're going to do is we're just going to mark out about uh, 10 inches, should be good. Mark out 10 inches, we'll use a sawzall. Alright, remember the steer tubes are usually no more than 8 inches or 9 inches. So, we've got 10 inches here. Then you're going to need a coupling. Here's an inch and a half coupling. Just stick that in there. Really doesn't even need to be glued. Just bang it together. And um, if you want to get real fancy, you take an inch and a half cap. I've got a cap here. And you uh, put that on the end. There we go. And we'll give that a, let me get you guys straightened out here. You give this a little whack with the hammer. Okay, so you get a solid sound. Now, we've got a crown race setting tool. All right, as quick as that. Inch and a half cap, inch and a half pipe, 10 inches long, inch and a half coupling. We set that down. On our crown race. This is if you have a solid race. And you just give it a bonk on top here. So your race is nice and set. And that's it, guys. We're gonna lay out our bearings. There's a top bearing. 
goes our bottom bearing. There goes that top cap. Clean that up a little bit. Okay. Now that was our top race. So we're going to clean that too. It's also split. Okay. Now, the other thing we had here was we had two five millimeter spacers. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace them with one 10 millimeter spacer underneath. I'm going to keep the same height and everything for now. Just I don't want to change too much. I'm going to keep the same, what looks to be another five millimeter spacer, but beveled. I'll keep that one too on top. So I'll put, I'm going to get rid of one spacer by uh, taking two fives and just putting a 10. All right. Now the next step we've got to do is it's a good time to repack these bearings. Let's uh, clean them off. We'll try to get all our excessive grease off the outside and stuff for now. And we'll pack new grease in there. All right, so what we're going to do here is we have nice clean hands. We're just going to take some of this uh, part tool grease. It's HPG 1 or I or whatever it is. It's just it's grease, guys. All right. And um, you're just going to push. You're just going to keep pushing this open groove of grease onto the blob of grease in your hand over and over again until you see grease spout out from the inside there like that so we're, and it's going to take a few minutes so we're just going to do them put some grease in our hand and uh, keep pushing it in there like this until we're satisfied that we've got plenty of grease in there a little grease there just try to, if you do it right, you should see a little bit of grease start to come out from the inner part of the race, that, that inner split. What I'm doing is I'm grabbing a little bit and I'm dragging across my palm, shoving it into that gap. Now, if you're worried about chemicals, you probably should be, I probably should be, should use um, gloves for this, and we're good. We'll leave the rest of the grease on the outside and stuff, it's fine. It's just a good idea to grease everything. Just put a nice little layer of grease on all this stuff here. It's anti-corrosion, it uh, will help in our assembly. I mean, I'm not putting it on thick, just a, a slick coating, and I'm wiping off as much as I can with my finger. So, this is just the extra grease I had from Greasing those bearings. So, all along through there. Like that. In fact, I should probably put a little grease underneath this uh, race here. Not a lot. You want to put a lot of grease under there. You don't want to track tons and tons of dirt. A little bit under there. Just to stop something called fretting. Little tiny movements between metals. Okay. Now, clean up the rest of my hand and we'll put. Down here, we're going to put our bearing, this bearing here, and uh, it goes like this with the bevel facing upwards. Like that, so we're going to put that on. There. Just like that. And then um, we have to stick it in the bike next. So I'll be back for that. and. Uh, Next time you see me, we'll have the bike in the clamp and we'll stick, the, stick it in there. Ok, 
Okay, next thing we need to do is clean up the uh, frame where the bearings are going to sit. Little channel. It's not really a race because a race goes in there, but maybe it is. I'm not worry about it. Bearing housing. Your head tube. You're going to clean out your head tube. I'm going to grab my forks. For now, what we're going to do is we're going to take our handlebars and Velcro them out of the way over here. forks. We've already got our, our bearing in the bottom and our crown race. Got our fork up through there. Nice and easy. Okay. Now, stick our top bearing in there. Nice and easy. Just let it drop in there. Stick our top race in there. I'm going to put the split towards the back. That's how it is on the bottom. So there's that. And then we need a 10 millimeter spacer that we had. Oops, nope, nope, nope. Of course, it's this top cap right here. So we got our top cap. You know, I want to put uh, some grease on that top cap so that um, it kind of acts as a seal. So, spoon some grease in there. Put this little number towards the back. Okay. Then we'll put our 10 mil spacer. Then our bevel spacer it goes up to our head tube. Then our handlebars that I've Velcroed here. And I haven't loosened enough for this set of forks. Great. Learn from my mistakes, guys. Loosen these bolts even more. Now, remember, we wanted a few millimeters of adjustment at the top. So let's see what we got put up here. Here's a five millimeter, so we're gonna throw a 10 millimeter up there. I gotta grab a 10 millimeter, so I'm gonna put this cap in real quick, just for a second. So the whole stack can hang down if it needs to. Okay. And chuck a 10 millimeter spacer up here. And our cap. So you see how this sits a couple millimeters below the surface? That's what you want. That way there's room to pull the whole thing together. Let me see if I can show you. Okay, see, see that? There's a little lip in there, probably about three millimeters. You want that. You want that because you need room to pull the whole assembly together called preload. So now we're gonna stick in our top cap here. And we're gonna start threading it in. Okay. 
Okay, now we can let go of the fork. We know it's not gonna fall down. We've got a spacer on top here so that uh, we have adjustability now, which we were out of before. I'm gonna clean up this little bit of grease that's sticking out. Clean it off my frame. I'm gonna spend some time wiping all this down, but we're not done yet. We've gotta set our preload. And uh, there's really no spec for preload. What you want to do is, in my opinion, uh, somebody who has some mechanical experience, is I put a little bit of preload and now I'm just going to wiggle the bars and hold my brake helper so it doesn't smack around. I'm going to wiggle the bars. It feels smooth. Try to rock it back and forth. I don't feel any rocking. I'm going to give just a little bit more preload. I'm just going to pull, pull the whole thing up together. Okay, when you're doing preload, you don't want to be cranking on this thing. It's not what's holding, it's not, it's not what's holding the bike together. I'm going to thread the brake on the bike uh, loosely so it doesn't keep flopping around and banging up my new brand new forks. Let me take one more look here, see if we're pretty straight. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cinch down these just a little bit. I'm gonna go nuts on those, because like I said, I wanna to torque those to spec later. But I'm gonna wait until my front wheel is on and I'm standing over the bike. So those are just nice and snug, but not crazy tight. This is that uh, Maxel, and it says uh, torque to 9 to 13 Newton meters. So you got torque right there, 9 to 13. So why don't we just set our torque wrench up for 12. And we're going to want to just put a nice coating on this. Don't need much. And we're just going to go ahead and grease this up. All right, slip our wheel in there. On these 27 inch plus wheels, the, if you're going to run three inch tires, you got to run a 29 to 4. And that's what this is, by the way. Um, you can't run a 27.5 uh, fork with three inch tires. There's usually just not enough clearance. So here we are. We're going to tighten this up and then we'll grab our torque wrench. We haven't got to use our torque wrench yet, so I'm going to go grab it. Looks like it uses a six mil on the axle. So here's our fancy, well, not really fancy, but our little torque wrench we decided to get so that we wouldn't uh, tear up the bicycle and cost ourselves more money trying to save money. So let's look down here at the axle and it says uh, torque nine to 13. So we'll set it for 12. Here's the scale here. It's just got a little tongue or a little red bar here. So we're just going to just go up here between 10 and 12. There we go. 
Got our six mil on there. We're set for tightening. Stick it in here. Go ahead and torque it. There it is. Now our front axle isn't going to come out. <clears throat> now we got to uh, put our little clamp here. Now this little Craig Brothers thing hasn't been missing anything that I've needed for this whole thing. Except for, you want to use a torque wrench, trust me. Just use a torque wrench. That way nothing comes loose. Nothing, you're not over tightening things. You're not pulling threads out of aluminum. Don't be weird, guys. Just... Okay, so we'll open up this little clamp. Pretty cool to put this clamp in before the tire was in my way. All right, the next thing we need to do is align our wheel, our brake on our wheel. Uh, so grab your wrench, and I'm just going to do it the easy way. This is the best way, in my opinion. So. do or what you're going to do too is you're going to grab your right your front brake your left it's your left brake handle is your front brake you're going to hold your front brake and you're going to back each bolt off now while holding the front brake you're just going to tighten a little bit on the top a little more on the bottom a little more on top no more on bottom. Now your brakes should not rub when you let it go. No rubbing. Silent. Okay, so uh, next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna look up the torque spec on those and I'm gonna torque those down. Like five, four millimeters. Go to the headset here. And set the torque. It says six newton meters. So we'll dial our torque wrench down to six. That's it. Put our socket on. Let's drop our bike. Handlebars are crooked. I thought they might be. Post. And I'm just going to stand over the bike. The handlebars are going off to the right a little bit, so we can just uh, use this to loosen these two guys a little bit. I'm looking from the center of this nut, down the middle, down the middle of this stem. Center of this nut, down the middle of the stem, and looking down the center of the tire. Looks pretty damn good. So now we're going to torque those two to spec. We're going to go back and forth. We have a wrench set at six. Double check that I didn't move it. Make sure your Allen key is all the way in the nut, or I mean in the bolt, in 
and I'm alternating back and forth on these pinch bolts because one loosens the other. Now I'm going to look for a click on this one. Nope, it's not time yet. So I'm going to go back to this one. this one. There's a click. Come back to the top one. Click. Go back to the bottom one. Click. No movement. Top one, a little bit of movement, click, bottom one, a little bit of movement, click, top one, a little bit of movement, click. Okay. Our fork is installed. Everything's torqued. Bike is safe. Got to do a little bit of cleanup. I'm going to throw it back in the stand. If you were going to throw your little fender on there, I'll show you how that would go. You would take off this protective film and you would slip it in here thusly. You'd fight with it and you'd zip tie it. Zip tie it to one like that. And that's it. So you'd, you'd have a uh, zip tie that went around through these holes in this sanction here, or this, this lower tube. And you'd have uh, two that went around here and then over that, uh, over that bridge there. I'm going to add air to the shock. I've opened up the rebound all the way. I've opened up the high and low speed compressions. So now we're just going to add a little air to the shot. And then we'll set our sag. On these rock shocks in the back, one of these dudes, you get the air pressures for the uh, fork. Here it is. Okay, I weigh 200 pounds. So it says 100 to 110. So let's go 105. There's a little air shot. You need a shock pump. You can't use a regular bike pump for this kind of stuff. They're just too high volume. You'll never get any kind of precision. You may not be able to get the pressure. Let me make sure you guys can still see. Let's bring you in here. And we'll just go to 105 PSI. It looks like there was already 50 in there. Let's go to 105. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. Okay, so. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So, you got a little button here to let a little air out. Here's 105. You should try to unscrew this thing very quickly to not let too much air out of the fork. It doesn't hold a lot in the first place, so a little bit will change the pressure significantly. Now, throw this on here, a little air cap. Okay, we got our air cap on there. This thing's ready to go. We just need to do a little bit of setup as far as sag and stuff. Okay, let your seat up to your normal ride height. And get on the bike. We're gonna sit on the bike. Everything's open, all our, our low speed compression, our high speed compression, and everything. And now we're gonna quick go around. We're just gonna do one fork. I mean one break. Don't do both breaks, it'll get you a weird reading. Bike comes to rest. Push this red, red ring down. Now we're going to get up off the bike. And we're going to 
check. That we have 130 millimeter, so we're using this scale. We're using the forward scale. The back scale is for 140. So we see that we're at a little above 10% sag. We want a little bit more than that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let out a little air. We're at 105, let's go down to 95 and see where we're at. Let's just set our sag with the pump attached, back brake. Okay, so now that we're stabilized, bring it down. Got a flight check. Okay, it says we're at about 15%. Let's let a little air out. Alright, let's jump off. Not trying to disturb it. Once you push the ring down, you don't want to disturb the bike. Okay, we're at about a little less than 20%. Let's see where I'm at here. I'm at 90 psi. I'm going to leave that. I'm just going to see how it like that. While we've got the bike upside down, let's take a look at this app. I went to uh, Rock Shocks Tuning. Uh, the books and stuff that came with the fork are basically nothing, they're just safety instructions. And if you go to Rock Shocks Tuning, See here, it says enter your serial number. I did. Now we go in here and it says what I've got. The serial number, by the way, is located on the back of the crown, right there. So I entered it in there. We get this little website here. Oops, Let's see if you can see it. And you hit tuning. And I'll enter my weight with my gear is gonna be about 210 pounds, a mountain bike. Okay, our pressure is gonna be 105 PSI. And our rebound is negative six click, uh, negative seven clicks from full slow, it says right here. Full slow position. So we'll go full slow and then we'll go negative six clicks. That's right over here. And this knob right there. So let's go we'll set that up, turn the bike right side up, and we'll do that. And then I'll just ride around, see how it feels. The other thing I wanted to mention was on that same website, and I'll show you this later. On the same website, you got an option here that says service kits. You click there. Now, there isn't a service kit yet because this, this is a 2021 fork. So, but if we go upgrade click kits, you can see that there's things to upgrade. Now, none of this stuff is gonna be an upgrade for this fork because it's got the latest debonair. It's got all the latest stuff because it's 2021. So, but anyhow, if you have an older fork, and I've got another bike with an older fork, you can go to service kits and order whatever part number comes up right there. And the website is trailhead.rockshocks.com. So we'll go full closed. Right over here. Okay, it's full closed. One click, two click, three click, four click, five click, six click, seven click. All right, I'm gonna go ride it around. Anyways, uh, you'll have to tune it after that. You'll have to kind of, you know, do it to your own recommendation. You can set your sag and stuff like we showed earlier. Um, you can start messing with these dials later. Uh, just go to the extremes with the dials, see what they do. Ride up and down the same section of trail. See what they do, see what you like. Um, with rebound, generally, if you don't have any guidelines, and these guidelines might be wrong for me, um, what you do is you set it so that when you compress the fork and you let it up on it, there's, no, there's little to no bounce. The wheel should not come off the ground but it's close to coming off the ground. So you want to back it off until the wheel bounces off the ground and then turn it on until just so the wheel doesn't bounce off the ground. You set your sag, push down on the fork, let go. Wheel just barely bounces off the ground, but that's fine. I would rather it be fast than slow. If your rebound's too slow, you hit a bump, fork can't come all the way back. Hits another bump, fork can't come all the way back. Hits another bump. That's called packing down. Around here in Arizona, 
rock after rock after rock. That's all the trails are. So we need, I need a quicker rebound so it can recover and be ready for the next hit. All right, you guys. It's been a long day. I appreciate you guys watching. Have a good time. Hopefully you guys save a little money and you can set it up perfectly exactly how you like it. I'm confident that this is going to be a great setup. Have a good one. All right, you guys. Let's weigh the bike with the new fork. Fort weighed 29 pounds. Now it weighs 28.8. Maybe my last measurement wasn't very accurate. There you go, guys. 28.8 with fat tires, aluminum frame, extra large, 130 mil forks. That's it. Two pounds. I'll change it over to uh, 461 ounces. 13.07 kilograms on that guy. I'm not a weight weenie, but uh, you also don't want a heavy ass bike because it uh, just isn't as playful.